David Shearer. Thank you, thank you Mr Speaker. Um, it's been a, a remarkable few days, and I mean remarkable in, in a number of ways. Remarkable from the sense that the opening of the, of the Rugby World Cup really was a world-class event. It's something we've, we're particularly proud of. Um, as New Zealanders, I think we can be particularly proud of. And many of the events that have been going on around the country have been, have been remarkable as well. People have touched on some of those great games that we've seen being played already, and it's only, we're only just a, a few days into it. And I want to pay tribute to the many, many people that have um, helped to put that uh, the Rugby World Cup together, right from its inception, right through its organisation, that the the people in the, in the, associated with the rugby, with the various councils around the, around the country that have, have been trying so hard and still try so hard to make this an amazing success for New Zealand. But it's also been remarkable, Mr Speaker, and we've touched on this today, by what actually happened down on, uh, on the waterfront in, in Auckland and on, and on the way to Auckland. Um, we, had some, we had some problems and we know what those are. We know what those are. It was a failure of the public transport system. There was a, an under-catering of the number of people that we expected to be down there. Uh, you can't just ask everybody to come down and party and not sort of think about how many people are going to come down. But what we really needed after that, Mr Speaker, was some cool, calm thinking about what happened, what went wrong and how to fix it for next time. But instead what we got, Mr Speaker, was Mr Panic Pants Murray McCulley coming down and waving, his, waving his, uh, himself all over the place and declaring that he's going to declare martial law down on the waterfront of Auckland and, and base that on the Rugby World Cup Act very, very dubious uh, means of being able to do that, Mr McCulley. He may want to have thought about it, what exactly he needed to do before he made all those blustering, sweaty announcements um, just the other day. He should have talked with the council. He didn't even give them the courtesy of a phone call. If he had sat down, sat down with the council, he might have found out that the council had been looking at this for many, many days and had actually worked out a plan of action. A plan of action that they put out publicly yesterday, which addressed many of the problems, Mr Speaker, that we had been facing um, on the waterfront and in our transport system. But no, we've got Mr Panic Pants coming down and blowing himself around the place and declaring that he's in charge now without even the legislative backing to enable him to do that. His incompetence, his ability is not only matched by that of Mr Joyce, the rear visionary Mr Joyce who spoke in the Parliament just a few minutes ago. Mr Joyce has been very busy, very busy over the last few months opening up railway stations all over Auckland. He's been claiming credit for the double tracking of the Western Line, for the electrification of the railway, for all the increase in rolling stock, for the Onihunga, Newland, Kingsland, Newmarket railway station that he's been there to turn up to, to, to open, the Northern Bus Route. These were all things that the Labour government put in place in the last few years. He's had the ability to open it, but he had absolutely nothing. He gave absolutely no thought, or has given no thought, to what comes next. Absolutely nothing, Mr Speaker. He has done nothing for public transport since he took on that job. All he has done is open Labour initiatives. He has done absolutely zero. In fact, One minute. One minute. in fact, Mr. Speaker, in fact, Mr. Speaker, what he's managed to do is neglect Auckland's transport, pour cold water all over the rail link that is so important for Auckland's transport future, and looks backwards and thinks what we need to do is build bigger and wider roads. Well, Aucklanders don't want that. They want a world-class transport system for a world-class city. That's what they want. And they want, Mr Speaker, that our National Party members here sit down with the Council, the Auckland City Council, and work it out together. I call Nikki Kaye.